Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and today we are doing a hands-on review of the Microsoft Surface Pro. This is like the geek's perspective, the Eli's perspective of the new Microsoft Surface Pro. So in the past, I've talked about the Surface RT, and I've talked about what kind of piece of garbage it I think it is, and a lot of people have said, Eli, you're not allowed to have that opinion because you don't own it, right? Because if you don't own something, you're not allowed to think it's a piece of garbage even when it is. Well, I did go out and I actually bought a real Surface Pro uh, for my own uses and today I'm going to talk a little bit about it to you guys from a geek's perspective, from a professional's perspective. So we're not going to be talking about Angry Birds today or any of that kind of stuff, but as a professional geek, what do I see about the Windows Pro? What is good? What is bad? What are some of the things that you should think about if you're going to buy one of these things, either for yourself or for one of your clients. Now what I will say, basically my overall impression of the Windows Pro, Surface Pro is that it is half-baked. This thing is a half-baked product. It does not mean it's necessarily a bad product. It does not, not necessarily mean it's an evil product or a horrible product, but it is a half-baked product. Once you buy one of these things, you're going to go, wow, this thing is kind of half-baked. Now, what I will say, though, uh, uh, you know, to, to counter counterpoint for the half-baked argument, I think most of Windows 8, by and large, is half-baked. And so what I would say is if, if you are thinking about buying some kind of ultra-book, ultra-portable laptop computer, you should think about buying the Microsoft Surface Pro because, you know, Anything you buy with Windows 8 on, it's going to be kind of half-baked. So, so, so you know, this isn't a bad uh, product all in all. So when you buy one of these Surface Pros, you're going to notice that it no does feel nice and heavy. It feels nice and hefty. Um, unlike the Asus or the, uh, the uh, Acer, uh, the, the the laptops or the uh, the tablets out there. This is it's it's a it's a metal case with a glass front, and this definitely gives the heft of something like an Apple product. It does feel good and heavy and nice when you when you have one of these things in your hand. You feel like oh, I I have a piece of equipment here. Now, when I went to buy this the uh, the Surface Pro, I made two decisions at the store. Now the first decision I made is I did not buy the lowest end version of the Surface Pro. You can buy one of these things with 64 gigs of hard drive space and that seemed kind of dumb. So I went to Best Buy, you know I do, I, I, don't, I don't get sponsored by Best Buy, I don't get any money from Best Buy, but I went to Best Buy because they have a, a, a return policy where you don't have to pay any kind of restocking fee. So I went to Best Buy and they had the option, you could buy the 64 gigabit version uh, of, of the Surface Pro for $899 or for $100 more, $999, you could buy the 128 gig version. So I went out and I made sure I bought the 128 gig version of the Surface Pro. The reason is, is because this does operate very much like a normal computer, which means once you buy it, you're going to want to do things like download iTunes, music, or movies, or take pictures, or do all of these things that take massive amounts of storage. 64 gigs, one, is not very much storage to begin with, and then two, once you add in the operating system and the recovery partition and everything else, you actually come out to only about 30 gigs of space on a uh, one of these Surface Pros that have a 64 gig uh, partition or a hard drive. That, that just seemed like a really, really, really bad idea to me. So I spent the extra $100 to get that 128 gig uh, version. Even with that, I'll show you when I, when I plug this thing and we do a little demo, I only come out with about 80 gigs left. So, so this thing eats 
hard drive space. So the first thing I would have you think about if you go out to buy one of these Service Pros is you're already spending 900 bucks on this thing, right? You're already spending, it's, it's not like you're spending $300 or $400. You're already spending $900 to buy one of these things. So, so you can either spend $900 and get something that's probably going to piss you off in a couple of months, or for $100 more, you can get something with a good hard drive space and it's not going to irritate you uh, nearly as much. Now with the Surface, computers, these, these, these Microsoft Surface uh, tablets, the nice part is, is, is you can get these, these covers that also are keyboards. Now one of the things that Microsoft has been pushing is what is called the touch cover. So they have two types of covers. They have the touch cover and then the type cover. Touch cover costs $99 and Basically, it feels like it feels like kind of like a latex cover and you can press the but the buttons on it, but they're not really buttons. It's kind of like a touch sensitive piece of plastic. So you can touch on it, but you can't really do touch typing and it doesn't really feel like a button. And I think they're really kind of kind of crappy to be honest with you. So I decided to upgrade again for an extra 30 bucks. You can get the type covers. If you can see these type covers actually have real buttons that click. Can you hear the click? They all click and they're real buttons. And I think this is a much better idea than that touch cover. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the touch cover, because with this you actually feel like you're typing on a real keyboard. Um, I don't know, it's really incredibly light, so I don't know if it adds any more, more weight to this whole mess, um, but, but I think the, 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 the type cover is the way to go. Don't go for the touch cover. Of course, as everybody knows, you can just click this thing on, and you go from having, oops, you go from having a tablet computer to a laptop, a weird little laptop computer, uh, lickety split. Now, one of the things that comes out, so, so far, this seems pretty good. And you think, okay, other than the hard drive space, that doesn't really seem half-baked. Well, one of the things that comes out half-baked is you can use a stylus for the, this Windows Surface Pro. So one of the, the main reason I got the Surface Pro was actually to use this as a digital whiteboard. So it gives me a stylus and it gives very accurate, I can draw things very accurately with this stylus. But the issue is, is in order to keep the stylus with your tablet, you kind of click it on with this little magnetic lock thing that's right on the side here. So, so there's a little connector and then this comes over and it clicks to the side like that. Well the first reason that this is a kind of a half-baked idea is that it's very easy to fall off. So I know a buddy of mine who, who has one of these that's already lost his stylus because it doesn't secure on, it doesn't lock on anywhere, it kind of just kind of sits there magnetically. Now if you're running around all over the place, the chances are that thing's going to fall off and you're going to lose it. Uh, that's, that, that's pretty pretty big. Hey look, I may have actually lost it already. Oh, there it is. So that's, that's the first thing. So, so the stylus doesn't lock in, so that seems kind of odd. But the other weird thing is so where this is locking into is actually where you connect the power cable. So the power cable is a magnetic lock thing, and so that's actually where you connect the power cable to recharge this. Now again, you figure Microsoft has had a lot of time to, to, to build this thing, that just seems kind of odd. But that's, that, that's a reality. So the stylus is here, stylus does work very well, but, but then you got that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna be able to plug this thing in to my, my little setup here. And that's the reason that I bought it. So if you guys are interested, if you guys do any kind of video production, or if you need to use your, your, your tablet to project something onto a screen or a monitor, you can go out and you can buy one of these mini port adapters to HDMI and connect this to any HDMI or HDTV. So that, that's, that's what I've done here. Now one of the things, uh, before I plug this, I, I will show you, is the startup is not as fast as an iPad. So as you guys know, I have my iPad, I love my iPad, I think the iPad is probably the best tablet out there. So when you have, a, when you have the iPad, as soon as you open it, the iPad turns on. As soon as you, as soon as you go, bloop, it, 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 it turns on. With the, uh, the, the, the Windows 8, the, 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 the Surface Pro here, it's not quite as fast. So if you open it up, you actually have to press the power button at the top, and as you'll see, it takes a couple seconds. So if I click it right now, 
one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and so it takes about two Mississippi. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not as fast as something that you would expect out of something like the iPad. So let me plug this in here. Oops. Let me get this so in. now it's connected. So let's go over and actually transition to the Surface Pro so I can show you what's going on. So this, this is the Windows 8 interface that, that we have all come to, to know and love and know and hate or, or whatever. So if I press the little Windows button here, we can go over and we go to the desktop interface. Now what I want to show you here is that as I was saying before, we have the Windows C drive and even though this is a 128 gig hard drive, you see it actually only has 110 gigs that it sees. And then out of that, with almost nothing installed, I'm down to only 85 gigs left. So as I talked about uh, before, just keep this in mind if you're going to be buying one of the, the, the Surface Pros, is it does eat through hard drive space a lot. Now the next thing is we can just go over to the uh, to the specs here just to see what's on this thing. So this does have an i5 processor in it. It's only 1.7 gigahertz, but it seems fast enough, at least for the stuff that I've been doing so far. And it has the four gig memory. So overall, if you compare this to any other laptop and any laptop that's been built in the last few years, this actually is a very very good, pretty decent, powerful laptop. I'm not not saying that I might be, be uh, be doing a lot of games or anything on this. But overall, if you're doing Word, if you're doing Excel, if you're going on to the internet, that kind of stuff, um, it, it's pretty good. Now, what I'll show you though, is that this it just seems weird with a lot of stuff. So if I go here, and I'm using my stylus right now. So, so I'm going down to this lower right hand corner, and I click with my stylus, and I open up my Google, my Google Sync thing. If I want to go and I want to click an option here, let's say I want to go to Preferences. If I click that, now with when I'm using the stylus, it doesn't do anything. All, all it does is it clicks and then it completely disappears. Now if I go and I use the keyboard part and I click and I go to Preferences, you will see that it actually shows up. So that's one of the things that I'm talking about when I say that this thing feels pretty half-baked. So sometimes a stylus works, sometimes you have to use the keyboard, sometimes you have to use your fingers. Like right now I'm using my fingers and... Yeah, it, I can't even get to the point. Every time I try to click something, it disappears. So this is one of the issues where I say that it seems half-baked. Now when I go over and I do something, let's say I want to try to pin something to the start menu. So, so when I talk about pinning something to the start menu, if I want one of these tiles here, I want it from a different program, I can go over here and if I use my stylus, so right now I'm using my stylus, I'm hovering over Excel, I hold down and now I get this option where I can do things like unpin from start, pin to taskbar, uninstall, blah blah blah. I get all these options, right? Well, if I go and I use my finger to do the exact same thing, so I'm now clicking down on Excel with my finger, well see, nothing happens there. I have to use the stylus, now I'm using the stylus, for that type of thing to work. So these are the weird little issues that you get into once you start using uh, the, 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 the Surface Pro. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm horribly knocking it, but, but yeah, like I said, you know, from the beginning we've been talking about with Windows 8 where it's had all these user interface problems. So it's had issues where you have to do weird things, you have to swipe weird ways um, in order to get stuff to work um, how people think it should be working already. Well, the issue that you find when you're dealing with this Surface Pro is on top of all those weird user interface issues, now you've got even more stuff that really doesn't make any sense. It's not about, about swiping or any of that. It's sometimes a stylus works and sometimes you have to use a keyboard and sometimes you have to use your finger. 
eh, what's that about? Now the one thing that I do want to show you for, for any of you guys that want to do anything like doing digital whiteboards or anything like I'm doing is if you use a program like OneNote I do have to say that the stylus on this is really what makes this Surface Pro just a great thing. If you can see how fast I'm drawing all of these things, this is literally as fast as if I was drawing stuff on a piece of paper and just as accurate. So this is what I really like about the Surface Pro and frankly is really why I bought it so that I could use OneNote in order to create little diagrams and be able to draw on them in order to use it for these classes. So, so the, the thing is like with the stylus, the stylus was one of those things that they really did a good job on at least for actually using it with within this, the the uh, the drawing software. So those are my thoughts on on, on the Windows uh, Surface Pro. Um, again, you know, before when I was talking about the RT, everybody said, "Hey, Eli, you don't own it. You can't say." Well, I do own the Surface Pro, so so I can say now, right? Again, as I've talked about in the past, whatever you do. Do not buy the Surface RT. The RT is the version that comes with the ARM processor and that thing is dead in the water. If you read any news coming from any of the manufacturers, the vendors, everybody thinks Windows RT is a dead in the, in dead in the water. That will become a dead end. So if you're thinking about buying a Surface or one of these, these Windows 8 tablets, buy the, in, the version that can run on Intel processors. Overall, the Surface Pro is, is a hefty, solid computer. Um, it feels about the same quality as an Apple, a little less, but, but hey, it's, it's a Microsoft product. If it does what you need it to do, it's a great thing. It is not the best tablet out there. I will say that. I own an Android, I own an iPad, and now I own this thing. I will still say, as a tablet, that the iPad is a far superior tablet. But if you are looking for an Ultrabook, if you're looking for some kind of convertible laptop that you can also use as a tablet, then the Microsoft Surface Pro it's, it's, it's a pretty good thing at the end of the day. Even with the i5 processor, I will say that the battery life on this thing is really good. I use this enough. Um, obviously, it's not my main computer, but I use this quite a bit throughout the day. And I generally, right now, am recharging it every three to four days. So, so if you sit down on it and you're watching a movie, you'll burn through the, uh, the, the battery, obviously, pretty quickly. But if you're somebody who just opens up your computer to check a few things and then you shut it, you're not keeping it on all the time, the battery length is, is, is really good. So again, it's not necessarily a bad product. It is is a half-baked product. What you need in the world, eh, I can't say. I do like it's got the front-facing camera and the back-facing camera that's, that's very good. It's got the wireless network connectivity that's very good. It's got USB 3.0. Um, so USB 3.0 it is good, but it doesn't have any other ports on there, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. And as far as I understand with the USB 3.0, this is not a powered port. So if you're trying to charge things off this port, that probably won't work out for you. But, uh, but yeah. This is just my opinions. This is just my thought process. Again, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's definitely a good thing. If you're going to buy this, make sure, I would argue, buy the 128 gig version. Believe me. Believe me. You're going you're, you're gonna to want that. And then also look for these type pad covers. These are, these are the Microsoft product. You should be able to find it at Best Buy right beside the, uh, the, the touch pad covers. I would think you will be much happier with those. So with that, that is my hands-on review of the Microsoft Surface Pro. Um, do with it what you will. You know what I'm saying. So as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. As always, I enjoyed uh, taping this video and look forward to seeing you at the next one.